Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how we can build and deploy a Django project with Vue.js as the front end using Docker. For simplicity, I'm going to break this video into two parts. So the first part is just going to be getting everything working locally. Um, and then the second part will be putting on a production server like DigitalOcean. Just before we get started, a shameless Patreon plug, you can now support me. I only have a single tier, £1 per month, which is roughly the price of uh, Ritz Original Crackers. Um, so yeah, you can check that out if you want. Also, as always, in the description you can see a link to a Discord where you can join and ask me any questions that you might have. Before we get started, make sure you've got Docker installed. Uh, you can use the official documentation, which I'll leave in a link in the description. And it's really easy. Just literally follow all of the steps that are mentioned here and then everything will work as intended. So that's it. Um, another thing we will need to do is we will need to install um, the Vue CLI, which is really easy. We can just um, install it like this. And another thing you'll need is Node. If you don't have Node, then I recommend again just using the official documentation as always, which I'll leave in the link in the description. So hopefully now you've got everything installed, we can go ahead and set up our project, basically. Um, we're going to begin, firstly I'm in an empty directory I've called uh, YouTube, or YT. Uh, and inside here we're going to install a virtual environment using VNV, so Python 3. I'm going to call it TENV, which just stands for test env. We can make sure it's there, then we can activate it, um, like so us back to the top so we've got a virtual environment activated the next thing we really want to do is install cookie cutter um, inside this so I'm going to grab this copy and paste that here so all we're doing is pip installing cookie cutter um, the way it tells us to do it and make sure that you use these single quotes as well otherwise it won't work So we've done that. The next thing we want to do is install Django cookie cutter, which we can just do with this command. So as we've downloaded it before, we don't mind that. Project name can just be um, my proj. Yep, description, author name, example. So here you can have your domain, of course, if you've got one, and I recommend putting it there if you've got if you've got one. If not, you can just leave it blank. Um, to make this project work with SSL, you need to put a real email here. So I'm going to give my email at gmail.com. That's fine. <clears throat> time zone is fine, Windows no, PyCharm no, use Docker yes, that's important. Uh, AWS, I'm going to say none here, but when we choose none, we need to make sure that we use white noise. If you don't use, yeah, so make sure you choose white noise or something like AWS, otherwise it won't work. You need a way to deploy your static files. Uh, use Heroku now. That's fine. So that's all set up now. So we've essentially set up our Django project. The next thing we can do is navigate inside that. And we can see all of our files here. So the next thing you really want to do is essentially install uh, Vue if you haven't done so. Hopefully you have. Again, the link is in the description. Once you have npm installed, it should just be this command. You might need to run it as sudo. Um, I know I did, so sudo npm install, uh, just that, and we should be ready to go. Okay, so once we've done that, we want to do view, create, front end. And we want to create this within our Django project, so where we are now in my proj. So view, create, front end. And then this is, I usually just go through it manually, so we can select features. Uh, right now, I mean, I know everyone uses TypeScript right now, I don't really care about that. I'd usually choose Progressive Web App always, Router always, UX always, CS preprocessors always, and then you probably want 
I don't know, unit testing and... I mean, you can really check them all if you want to. Really, obviously, choose your own requirements. I'll go for U3. Use history mode for that, yes. I'll go with SAS. Oh, I didn't mean to choose Alinta, but again, you can do what you want. Um, let's just go with that. Lint on save. Sure. Mocha Chai, Cypress. Dedicated config files. Save this as a preset. No. Don't really care about that. So then we just wait for this to all be set up. Let me get ready for the next bit. And we probably want to quickly check that it's working. So we'll serve this once it's um, all installed. Okay, so it tells us what to do next. So let's cd into front end and then npm run serve. And if we go to this, it's running here, we can see that that's worked correctly. Nice. So I guess the next thing we want to do is basically dockerize it as part of our project. So we can just run our docker command and the front end will also be up. Okay, so now we need to dockerize um, our front end stuff. So I'm going to clear all of that. Let's go back one into here. And I'm just going to open our project with VS Code. So I didn't mean to do that. Uh, code my podge. So we're going to open this. And I basically previously dockerized something and I'm going to be using that as a template. So we're going to go into our local.yaml and we're just going to deal with local for this video, like I said. And essentially what I want to do, and I'll try and remember to make all of this code available on my GitHub, so just check that out. Um, I still recommend following through for the steps because um, Django Cookie Cutter does have a bunch of things in gitignore. So you if you just copy my GitHub repository, then there'll be a bunch of things missing. Pretty much anything in this, definitely anything to do with like virtual environments and stuff like that. So still follow, but you can navigate through my GitHub repository and just kind of copy the bits of code that you need. Um, so do that. So first thing we've done is we've defined a new container called front end. The container name is front end and it's on restart always. Um, this is mainly for, for, produ for production. So the context is basically what's the folder called and for us the folder is called front end. For you it might be called something else. Well, hopefully it's just called front end. Container name is front end. I'm not sure why I've got that twice. That's definitely a mistake. The image should just be, for me, I'm just going to call it, it could be your project, like my proj front end image, up to you. Depends on API, so usually when I build something using Vue.js in the front end and Django in the back end, um, I just call it the front end API, um, so it would require changing this. But it's called Django all throughout the project, so it's just easier for now to say this depends on Django. So again, the volumes, this needs to be called front end. And here we're basically just mapping externally the port 81 um, to internally the port 80. So in terms of local.yaml, that's all we need to do. I think this is all correct. Just double check that all. Docker file. Okay, lovely. So we can close that. The other thing we need to do is we need to go back inside our front end now and we need to touch docker file. So we need to create that docker file. Okay, let's go back to our project. And we can see we've got a new file here called docker file. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste all of this in. 
and this is all fine. We don't need to change anything here. Uh, our work directory needs to match the work directory that we state everywhere else, but by default, Django Cookie, cookie Cutter does state um, app as the work directory. So that's fine. So we're going to be using Nginx for our Vue.js stuff. So in here, we're going to make a folder called Nginx. So this is in our front end. And inside here, we're going to create a file called nginx.conf. Okay, let me just double check that. Yep. And again, we will want to edit this. So we've got this nginx.conf file. Oh, okay, I made a mistake here. So our um, nginx.conf navigate inside nginx and then create uh, our file again, nginx.conf. Okay, so nginx, nginx.conf. So we now need to make some changes here. And I can talk you through these changes. Again, I'll make this available and you'll just have to kind of navigate through this repository to kind of just copy what I'm doing. So for the most part, we don't need to change any of this. However, as you can see, we're using API here, which refers to the service that we wanted to use. This one doesn't. Proxy API is just what it's called. So this needs to change to Django. Okay, so we've changed this to Django and we're basically saying anything that comes to us from Django port 8000, which is, let's check our local.yaml, which by default is what um, Cookie Cutter uses. If this is a different port, then you need to make sure that the port in your Nginx um, matches that. Okay. So that's what this file needs to look like. So unless I've missed anything obvious, I think that's it. We should be ready to at least run locally. So I guess we can try that now. First, let's check our browser, I guess. Um, where were we? So that's localhost 81. There's nothing running there. And we can just try to make everything run now. So we need to go back into our project. Then we need to run this command. So we're saying docker compose, then we're choosing our file, which is local.yaml up. Uh, we're putting it in the background and we're building. Now, before you do this command, if you've installed using the official, this is an older version of Docker, yours will probably look like this. So that's the difference. If you've installed using the official Docker documentation, your command will look like this, but my command is this. So I'm going to try and build that. So that probably took a while to build. It certainly took me a while to build. We can, however, now check, uh, sorry, docker container ls-a. If everything is up and running, it seems it is. And if I just make this a little bit smaller, just so I can see what's going on, um, it's telling us that our front end is on port uh, 81 on the outside and our local project is on 8000, our Django project, sorry. So if we now go to here, localhost 81, we can see our Vue.js project is working. Uh, if we go to port 8000, we can see our Django project is working. And there was another one, if you saw, I can quickly get it up, uh, is we've got something else on port 9000, which comes with cookie cutter by default, which is docs that you can also play with, which looks like this. So everything is working. So at this point, what you would do, so essentially we can now communicate between these apps, right? You still need to do all of the work for that. Um, and maybe I can do that in another video if people want me to do that. Um, I'll also be doing a part two to this where we do this on like DigitalOcean or Linode or something and we do it on production. For the most part, it will be the same. 
Um, if you're interested though, the changes are pretty much just in traffic. So these are the only kind of places where things will need to change because we essentially need to account for our new front end. Right now, um, we're only accounting for our Django app um, and not our, sorry, our Django service and we're not accounting for our uh, front end service. So that's it anyway. So remember, if you have any questions, either leave them below or join the Discord, that would be great. And yeah, thank you for watching.